Okay, so turning, on, turning on the mic. Keep your riffraff out. Good evening. It's 6 o'clock. This is the uh, <coughs> Committee of Community Partnerships Committee. Uh, to my left is Jeff Schilling. Uh, Mr. Sievert's been delayed. And uh, I'm William Rizal and Chairman. And we've come today to uh, provide a recommendation to Council regarding urging Congress and the Ohio legislator, Legislature to enact legislation to address rail safety. It is further requested that emergency legislation be considered so that a resolution of Council can be forwarded without delay. Mr. Titterton, for the so, details. Uh, there have been, uh, as, as we all know, there have been several fairly high profile issues uh, with uh, primarily Norfolk Southern. Um, we have a very active rail here. It's not uh, NS, but it's uh, CSX. Uh, the Ohio Municipal League uh, sent out a, uh, a request call for action is what they call it if, if you're on their email list, uh, asking that uh, all of the uh, subdivisions, uh, municipalities across the state uh, consider just passing a resolution encouraging the state and the federal government to continue to look at this and look at rail safety. Uh, and since we've been receiving, uh, they've tapered off, but we were receiving quite a few calls, particularly on the quality, the excellent and high quality of our water system, uh, as well as some rail safety related questions. Uh, we didn't see any harm in uh, in passing this and in getting it forward to the right people uh, at the higher levels. We are asking for emergency legislation. Any further questions? Yeah, I have a question. On the uh, on the on the rail, the the bridge, the CSX bridge over the Miami River. Uh, I know we've gotten a report um, from them on the the last inspection, and of course it was. Uh, very modest in its scope and um, my question is can we as a city having the ability to do outside inspections of other properties for weeds and deteriorating conditions and that type of thing uh, and because we have we could access the bridge without actually getting on it through a, through watercraft could we inspect that bridge on a regular basis to look for defects that we could report to the railroad I mean or report to somebody uh, short answer is no that is private property um, the uh, the reason that we only got a summary report was that, that was all they are required by federal law to release uh, the detailed reports not even the uh, Federal Rail Administration nor uh, PUCO here in Ohio have access to uh, that property is private property. If uh, anyone uh, were to enter onto that property, it would constitute trespassing. Right. Um, they were, uh, I can tell you in the correspondence back and forth, that they were not uh, very happy with some of the pictures that had been taken, although some of them may have been done from afar with a zoom lens, just in full disclosure. Um, but they made it quite clear that you know, they're responsible, they're required, and they do uh, annual inspections. And the two-pager that we got, that's all we can get. Okay, now, but we have the ability to inspect outside of other private properties. I mean, for things like noxious weeds and, and disrepair and things like that, I mean, we do that on, our, on other properties. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm saying we could access that uh, bridge via the river. We could do it by a watercraft that would not get on the bridge and do an under, underside inspection of the entire bridge and say, hey, this is, and, and could we essentially set up a, uh, you know, if you don't get it repaired, we, we can fine you like we do our uh, uh, other private property owners? No, the federal law supersedes state and local uh, legislation. Um, they are very strictly regulated at the federal level. Um, I, we do not have the staff that would know what to look for, even if we were to take pictures. And if we saw pictures, I, you know, I thought, I, I think I saw a picture or two of, uh, you know, where there was a bolt sticking up and no the head was this, this far above. And, you know, it's easy to assume that that is a defect, 
uh, and they tried to characterize it as such on uh, social media. However, you know, that could be required to have that kind of a gap because you've got tons and tons of weight and there there may be some shifting that you want to have. I don't know. I'm right. totally making that up. But my point is is that you know, we don't have any staff. Um, we're not going to we're not going to hire a, uh, a transportation engineering in inspector uh, to come in and give a partial inspection that may or may not be worthless um, or worth anything. And the uh, you know, with the railroad being required to do frequent inspections of their own and issue the comprehensive report publicly that they uh, that they do um, there's even if we could legally do it I don't know that it would be worth the money to do it I just hate to see one of those things land in the river that's all I I think the railroad would too yeah uh, so I mean, they'd be sorely disappointed more yeah. than, uh, you know, than we, we think so Okay, I just I was curious. I, I mean, private property we have a right to inspect the out the outside inspection. We, you know, I would think we'd have the ability to, if we wanted to, we could do In matters we could do of property maintenance, um, not related to higher powers, uh, which many would argue the uh, the railroads unfortunately have. Yeah, uh, we do have that right, but okay. not with regards to the railroad. Thank you, Mr. Chief. I have any other questions? What would you like to do? I am. Oh, I'm sorry, Chad. Uh, somewhat related, Mr. Tennington, uh, on a side conversation, but related, a citizen had reached out to me, and you'd already discussed with me about quote unquote quiet zones for the railroads. For the public record, can you just reiterate uh, what the city has done to look into that matter? Well, it really doesn't have anything to do with this, I am, but yes. uh, I, I'll keep it very, very, very brief. We have looked at that a couple of times over the last 15 years. Quiet zones are kind of a misnomer. Um, they, uh, I would consider them at best quieter zones uh, because uh, the railroad and the conductors, they do not give up the, uh, the right and the responsibility to blow the horn when they feel that there's a safety issue. Um, the, the, it is a very long process and it is not cheap. Uh, there are several layers of bureaucracy you have to go through. Uh, there are um, special firms that you have to hire, one to do a study, another to confirm and verify that study uh, before it would even be approved. And then uh, when you make modifications at crossings, you cannot do them in single. Uh, last I remember, it's been a while, you have to look at uh, improving at least three crossings, consecutive crossings, uh, each one can, uh, of which can cost several uh, hundred thousands each, depending on what's there as far as arms and technology and what needs to be improved. Uh, all of those costs would be on the city of Troy. Uh, there are no federal grants. There are no, there's no assistance uh, to support that. And at the end, you may still have a, uh, trains that come through that are just as noisy, maybe marginally less, but they're still noisy. Your, your time really Anybody else? Name and address. Bradley Banner, 105 Presswood Drive. I'm curious, Mr. I am Titterington, whether or not this resolution is in support of the recently introduced Bipartisan Railway Safety Act of 2023 that was proposed by Senators Vance and Brown after the Springfield Rail Derailment. Is that what you're seeking to support? Not, uh, uh, I don't believe that this resolution will cite any specific legislation because introduced legislation has a tendency to be modified, amended, uh, scrapped, and started over. Uh, it is mer merely to say co uh, Congress, Ohio, we, we'd like you to look at the issue, we'd like you to, to study the safety, any safety issues, and we'd like you to address those. Well, I can tell you that the issue is indeed being looked at, Mr. Tedrington, after the railroad uh, derailment in Springfield. As I said, Senators Vance and Brown have introduced a railway safety bill 
And I'd like to, with the permission of counsel of the committee chair, read into a, the record a statement from President Biden concerning that uh, that uh, that uh, proposed act, if I may. Uh, well, my question, wait a minute, Brad. My question is, how is that, is that affecting, affecting what we want? Well, I think I think if there, if, since there's, I just that legislation I, is what you were seeking to support, or if it was overall legislation in general. I, I think it's a general, it's a general statement. If I, correct me if I'm wrong, administration. I, I just think it's a general statement that says, "Hey, we've been aware of these things. It's happened twice in Ohio in the last what month." We don't really want it to happen in our neighborhood or our backyard or anywhere else in the state, <laughs> and we want to be on record as saying, please look into this, look into the safety, regardless of what legislation is passed. Okay, okay, right. well, that, that, that may be well so, and I can share that with you after the meeting if you'd okay. like. That'd be fine. Okay, thank you. Anyone else in the audience? Seeing none, uh, move forward with Move forward, Move forward with the emergency legislation. Emergency legislation. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Anything else for community partnerships? No, no. sir. We are adjourned. You want to flip flops, please?